Wonderful structures shouldn't be taken lightly. So we decided to try and get some interested professionals together to talk about the wonderful Civic Arena, or Mellon Arena, while it's still here. Is this a, a photo of the original model? Yeah, it's one of many models. That's Rob Foffman on the left. He's an architect and an advocate for saving the arena. John Minetti is in the center. He's a structural engineer and the area manager for Amman and Whitney, the New York engineering firm that figured out how to make the domed roof open. And Phil Hundley is on the right. He's principal in the architectural firm DRS, which is a descendant of Mitchell Ritchie, the original architectural firm on the arena. All three of these guys have admired that building. The dome design, the, the cantilever truss that's supporting the whole thing, I think probably most, most engineers, most people, if they never heard of it, probably wouldn't believe that it opened like it did. The concept was to have a dome that opened. That's what Edgar Coffin wanted, and he gave him a million dollars to do it. Well, how do you get this dome to open? It's more than architecture, it's engineering, it's bridge building. We had people that were true visionaries here, you know, and, and, and pushing the envelope on the use of structure and the use of materials. And originally, the uh, structure wasn't even intended for hockey. It was just going to be the Civic Light Opera right. in concerts, right. mm -hmm. sort of like the Hollywood Bowl. I went one night to Civic Light Opera with Mr. Dieter, and we went in there, and they opened the dome, and it just blew me away. I said, thank God I'm with this firm, because this is so great. I'm part of this, you know, I'm part of the excitement of architecture. I was in there once for a concert also, and I don't know if you had the same impression, but uh, impression, but it was silent. I really didn't hear, you don't hear like all this machinery right. going. I mean, it just was moving. It was just... Yeah, when they opened the dome, it was too, got too windy. They had to close it because the wind would right. get in there and just completely destroy the sound system. And, and wow. It just, so it wasn't structurally, there was no concern about no, the building in high winds? Yeah, but yeah. for the concerts it was. The, the band I saw when the roof opened was, uh, and this is going back, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. That's kind of a cool shot. Oh, that's a great shot. Under yeah. construction. Mm. You know, all the leaves go on top of each other. You know, the, the, um, the engineering that went into that and to have it out, you know, work and move and, and then be supported by a single truss and have the whole thing hanging over the audience was, was quite a feat. It'd be exciting to open right. one more time, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. No what happens? Well, no matter what happens, exactly. Actually, we were talking. We have a party there, a party for Pittsburgh. <laughs> Preservation Pittsburgh's working on it. We want to do that. that we'll get oh, really? It. And what we wanted to do is actually have a hockey game under the stars. Um, wouldn't that be perfect? They did it up in Buffalo. Why can't we do it right. here? Right. coming in. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be great? Yeah. And fireworks afterwards? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a building that um, will never be built again, most likely, because you couldn't afford to build it again. And. Uh, it's a shame that they don't open the dome more often because I think that would be something that would really excite Pittsburgh. The idea of reusing the building um, possibly as a civic space, and what we mean by that is a park, uh, a public space that has a hotel in it. It could have a marketplace. It could be an ethnic marketplace. It could have jazz clubs. Um, there's a site plan here, a master plan, so-called, that you would um, tie in the old arena to the new arena by using Mary Lemieux Place, symbolically, as the connector between mm -hmm. the two, and then um, really understand that it isn't just about the lower hill, that it's also about the redevelopment of the middle and the upper hill. Sure. You know, so we're doing a new library up at this end and developing new streetscapes and, and uh, connections for pedestrians and bicyclists and things like that. And uh, if you think about it, the hill doesn't have a park, so maybe the Civic Arena could become a Civic Park. Mm -hmm. um, that was one idea. I've had people come up to me, including people on the hill, elders in the hill, that say, um, I can't really say anything, but I really agree with you. I really think you keep doing it. And uh, politicians will do that. In ways, many ways, this is the right project for Pittsburgh. The, right. the steel, the, the innovation. and yeah. mm -hmm. This idea of reusing things is very important, I think, to our society. It's part of green design. The greenest building is one that already exists. Mm -hmm. And actually, even Baltimore, this is one example in America, they tore down the building, but they kept the footprint of the field. Which is mm -hmm. cool, yeah. Yeah, and they use it as, so now kids can play on the same baseball mm -hmm. field, you know. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great to say you can go play ice hockey at the place where Marielle Lemieux played yeah. ice hockey? Mm -hmm. And the know? kid, that was right, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's going to cost, you know, 15, 20 million dollars to demolish the building. Uh, you know, it's a lot of money, number one. Number two, you're losing something you'll never get back. So it's truly a Pittsburgh landmark. You know, this was just a clip. To get a DVD copy of this entire program or others like it, please call 1-800-274-1307 or visit wqed.org and click on Shop WQED.